Welcome to my unboxing and overview of my new best friend. This, my friends, has already been out of the box. I've already seen it and it is absolutely gorgeous. This is the ASUS PA279Q. It has a 10-bit AHIPS panel. So what that basically means is full support for deep color. That is, it can represent a broader range of colors and more intermediary steps between them so that you have very fine shifts from one color to another or from one shade to another one, even in between different shades of gray. It, <laughs> okay, so on top of the 10-bit panel, it has a 14-bit lookup table, which means the monitor itself can understand even more information than it can actually display because all monitors are going to approximate. They have to approximate. Most monitors are capable of displaying around 16.8, I think it is, million colors. And so any Anything that isn't one of those 16.8 million discrete colors has to be approximated to one of those 16.8 million colors. So what a 14-bit lookup table and 10-bit panel means is fewer approximations and much more true-to-life colors. This is particularly important for creative professionals such as photo or video editors that want to have the most accurate Whoops. color possible in their photos or videos, but it can also be something that's valued by general users as well. The first thing we find inside the box is the included hood. So this is if you have bright ambient lighting and you want to maintain the true to life colors that the monitor can produce. If I had to criticize something about this monitor, which I guess I probably should, it would be this. It's not a very good implementation. It's flimsy plastic. It has what appears to be a non-reusable adhesive on the inside. So you just have to decide once and only once whether or not you want to use it. And I think I'm going to opt not to, going instead for controlling the ambient light and using the panel itself. You get a USB 3 cable, A to B. You get a mini display port to full size display port cable. You get an audio cable for the integrated dual three watt speakers, which are actually surprisingly not bad. You get a power cable, which you can see we've already used, a full size display port to full size display port cable, a dual link DVI cable, driver disc, don't use that. And finally, an HDMI cable, but don't use this either because HDMI in is not gonna be capable of driving the massive 2560 by 1440 resolution that this monitor supports. For any kind of professional application, you're gonna to wanna to be using DisplayPort in order to get full res and deep color support. But much in the same way that lots of bass in music is not necessarily good, Lots of colors that are oversaturated and ugly are not necessarily good, but don't worry, this is a PA monitor, which means that it comes with a calibration testing report. So they show you the equipment they're using and the results that were obtained on this exact monitor. This does add additional cost to the manufacturing process, but on ProArt monitors, they want you to know that you're getting what you paid for. It comes with a guaranteed Delta E of less than two. This is a huge step up from the promised Delta E of less than five on previous ProArt monitors. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Delta E, it is basically the difference between what the color is supposed to look like and what it actually looks like on the display itself. Now they use a couple of tricks in order to make sure that the the uniformity of the colors on the monitor are is as good as possible and one of them is called uniformity compensation so that ensures that you're not going to have a brightness and color that is dramatically different in this corner compared to a central reference point and the same goes for any other segment of the monitor and that's included on your calibration report as well so let's have a look at it physically it's got all the usual adjustments height adjustable stand as well as tilt pivot and, or swivel, I guess this one's called, and finally, pivot. That's right, portrait mode. So you can put it in this setting if you really, really wanted to. What I usually use this for is to plug in my port. So you've got a nice solid base, and then, wow, all the expansion you could pretty much ever want. So there's your, your USB 3 in. There's three USB 3 ports for the included hub. Display port, okay, hold on. Display port in and out. So this supports daisy chaining. So this is the output. So what that means is you can actually hook up multiple monitors, up to four, depending on the resolution from one display port. Port, HDMI 
HDMI, don't use that, DVI, and then we've got audio in as well as a pass-through for your headphones, should you so desire. Power in is here, and a dedicated power switch as well as Kensington lock are down here on the bottom. Lots of ventilation, you can see pretty much the entire back of the monitor is covered in perforations because it does need, in order to have, you know, really fancy electronics inside it, some passive cooling, although there is no cooling fan included. And then finally, on this side, you've got a couple more things, so that's three more USB 3 ports and an SD card reader that supports all the latest standards. On the other side, you don't find a whole much of a lot of anything other than the on-screen display, which is on this side of the panel right here, and uses a bit of a different implementation. So you can now browse the menu by using it as a bit of a joystick, up, down, left, right, and then pressing to confirm. And then there's all the other stuff here. You got some programmable buttons and whatnot for presets. As you can see, we've fired up the monitor now. This amazing 4K clip was shot on the Sony FS700, not by us, guys. You can click the annotation or check out the link in the video description to see it. We didn't, we didn't shoot it, I wanna be really clear about that, but it looks amazing, even like two inches from the screen, how much detail there is, especially when watching on a greater than HD monitor. But before we get too much further into this, guys, word from our sponsor, are you going to BlizzCon? It's so great. If you're not, then that's great too. Intel's giving away two HP ElitePad 900 tablets as part of their BlizzCon extravaganza. All you have to do is tweet your favorite Warcraft Hearthstone character to hashtag Intel BlizzCon, or with hashtag Intel BlizzCon, pardon me, you don't have to tweet it to anyone in particular, and you will have a chance to win one of those two tablets. The contest closes November 10th, and you can find the full contest details in the link in the video description on the Linus Tech Tips forum. So without further ado, Ah, this monitor, man, I love it. So we're gonna do the usual things where we do our tilt test so you can see that not only is the color extremely uniform, but even at extreme angles, you're not gonna lose that color accuracy. Yes, some of the brightness goes away, but that's perfectly natural because the light is being emitted out the front of the panel. So not all of it is going to reach your eyes, obviously, if you're looking at it from an extreme angle. But maintaining color accuracy from an angle is extremely important for professional use. So we're just gonna go ahead, give you guys that full range there. Man, it looks good. And according to the video review done by Digital Versus, we're looking at about 30 milliseconds of input lag, which is actually not bad. Now, one thing that makes it not really optimal for gaming is the fact that it does exhibit reverse ghosting, which is kind of like ghosting, where there's an image trailing the other image, except that those are reversed in terms of the colors. So red would be green, etc., etc. So it can be a little bit more distracting than regular ghosting. Personally, I've been dealing with this kind of ghosting since my old Ben, or rather Dell 2405 FPW, so it doesn't really bother me anymore, but if you're not used to it, then there you go. Uh, very decent speakers, as I mentioned before, but I actually can't find them, so I'm not sure exactly where they are, because they're, they're not visible on the front. They're probably hidden somewhere behind all these grills in the back, but both Slick and I were surprised at how usable they are. If you don't need like a, a subwoofer and a you know dedicated gaming speaker setup and you mostly use headphones, I think you'll find yourself not really requiring any additional desktop speakers, which is quite nice. They have a completely new on-screen display control mode, so I actually found it extremely easy to navigate. So they've got their usual splendid stuff. You can see it supports sRGB, RGB, as well as NTSC somewhere in there. So it does 99% Adobe RGB, 100% sRGB, and 120% NTSC. They've also got some unique picture-in-picture -picture settings. So you can actually do picture-in-picture or well, okay, obviously we don't have two monitors set up, but you can do picture in picture or picture by picture for pretty much any of the inputs, which is extremely flexible. So it's, it's really nice to see that. Again, this is really easy to navigate. I actually quite like it. So you can turn uniformity compensation on and off. It's nice that they give you control of stuff like this because not everyone necessarily wants that. Again, this is a professional monitor. So being able to adjust things like color temperature is again, very, very important. And they've also got, although I can't find it right now, but they've also got a pretty unique six axis independent color control setting that allows you to actually adjust each of the different colors independently without affecting any of the other ones. So how do you take advantage of its greatness? Because not every application is going to, I mean, not every computer is even gonna be able to output 10-bit color. So every part of the chain has to support 10-bit color, your application, your hardware, and the monitor itself in order to take advantage of deep color. So, okay, the monitors for creative professionals, whether it's photo editing or video editing or 
anyone who has to work with color in any kind of accurate capacity. But what about gamers? Why am I interested in this monitor or even general users? Well, it's less fatiguing to look at. Even if you aren't taking advantage of 10-bit color, man, it's beautiful. It is absolutely unbelievable. So while I wouldn't recommend it to someone like a competitive gamer where you want as many updates on the screen per second as possible, you're going to want a 120 hertz monitor, preferably with a strobing backlight so that the image is extremely crisp. Um, in order to get like every last competitive edge, for you I wouldn't recommend it, but for someone who's more of a sightseer, maybe you play Batman, or maybe you play games like Skyrim, and you just want to be as immersed in as beautiful a fantasy world as you possibly can, you know what? If you're willing to spend the money, it's not a terrible recommendation. This is my new personal favorite monitor. I'm one of those people who believes that a monitor is something a part of your computer you spend more time looking at than any other component and it is worth investing heavily in them once in a while versus doing frequent upgrades from one TN panel to another cruddy TN panel that might be slightly better than the old one. I've only bought two monitors in about the last eight years because again, I spend about seven, eight hundred dollars on them and then I expect them to last for multiple upgrade cycles of the rest of my components. So in conclusion, not for gaming, for professional use, Serves its purpose extremely well, is absolutely beautiful and not fatiguing to look at, has great on-screen options. However, I personally plan to use it for general use and gaming because it's absolutely beautiful, extremely well built, looks great on your desk, and all those other good things that are about it. But yes, it is extremely expensive. So like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave me a comment letting me know what you do for your monitor upgrade cycle. How often do you upgrade? How much do you expect to spend? And last but not least, guys, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Thank you.